Can a keto diet prevent or treat cancer? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional information online. In this video, we're going to hear the theoretical and in biochemical reason why ketones can be useful in treating or preventing cancer. And it's done by Nick Norwitz, a up and coming superstar in the biochemistry and keto world. He's a medical student at Harvard University. Let's see what he has to say. Be sure to wait till the end where I give you my final thoughts. Want to learn more about the metabolic aspects of cancer? Wish you knew the facts about how certain foods affect cancer at risk? Our online course, Metabolic Nutrition for Cancer, will teach you everything you need to know about the connection between sugar, insulin, and cancer, and how to use a customized ketogenic diet as part of your treatment to support a successful outcome. It's taught by Dr. Christy Kesslering, a leading oncologist who's been using metabolic therapies with her patients for years. Please click the link in the description below to learn more and to enroll. How can keto block cancer? In this video, I promise to answer that question based on brand new research. But first, I want to dissect why some people, maybe you, have an adverse reaction to the idea that keto is anti-cancer. So here's my high level take. People see keto as an elimination diet where you just cut the carbs. It's about subtracting something, not adding something. Therefore, the removal of something, presumably a bad something, carbs or sugar, results in something good, anti-cancer. And because people, well, many people, are emotionally attached to carbs, there's a negative visceral reaction, as if someone, me, is calling carbs evil. But you know me by now, or if you don't, you will. And with me, there's always a different frame a different lens, a different perspective. I do not see keto as a subtraction diet. Rather, keto is the addition of a metabolic state, that of ketosis, where your body is making these ketone molecules, which are not only fuel for your body, but also hormones and signaling molecules that rewire metabolism. <laughs> well, so it's both. It's an elimination diet and an additive diet. The idea that someone has a gluten problem and on a keto diet that's gluten-free, they get better. It's an elimination diet. If someone has a FODMAP issue, meaning simple sugars cause their irritable bowel syndrome or heartburn, and you eliminate those, then keto is an elimination diet. But his point is, and I understand, is that it's not just eliminating, you're also getting something beneficial from it. I remember Georgia Ede, E-D-E, who has a book on mental health in the keto world. Georgia gave a talk on how if all you do is subtract, the, the, it was the psychology of subtraction is, was the name of the talk. And she said, if you present the keto diet just as subtracting things, people are, like Nick is saying, are going to feel like they're missing something. So, of course, I in my initial teaching, talk about the things you can have, like bacon, if people like bacon, or pork rinds in the South. People love pork rinds in North Carolina and chicharrones, of course, other parts of the U.S. and the world, too. But so I emphasize the foods that people can have that maybe they thought they couldn't have before. So it's not just entirely subtracting out different things. But so here, adding uh, that spin, that it's not just taking away things, you're fueling yourself on ketones now, is a really important point. So let's see what ketones do. Yes, I said that. Ketone bodies, in particular, the ketone body beta-hydroxybutyrate, is much, much more than gas for cellular engines. It can be the freaking steering wheel. And I'll prove it to you. Enter this paper, Ketogenic Diet Reshapes Cancer Metabolism Through Lysine Beta-Hydroxybutyrylation. Big words, I know, we're gonna break it down. Notice the date, 2024. So this is uh, in published August 12, 20, brand new. So the science coming out on ketones is new. So don't expect your doctor or even your oncologist 
to necessarily know about these things. This is, this is cutting edge stuff. Cancerous cells are good at what? They're good at growing. To do this, they require metabolic reprogramming that upregulates pathways that facilitate growth. And this includes the sugar breakdown pathway of glycolysis, which breaks down sugar, glucose, into smaller carbon molecules, pyruvate, and downstream of that, acetyl-CoA. You don't need to know those terms, just throwing them out there for jargon's sake. Anyway, these can be used as carbon building blocks for growth, provided the cancer cell can divert them as building substrates, which cancer cells are pretty good at doing. The ketone body beta-hydroxybutyrate itself strangles cancer by attaching itself to a key enzyme in glycolysis, aldolase B, that helps break down sugar, and in so doing, it inhibits aldolase B, just like I'd inhibit your ability to run if I jumped on your back. Isn't that a funny vision? And in so doing, in inhibiting aldolase B, it also inhibits mTOR, the master regulator of growth, providing a one-two punch whereby ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, as a signaling molecule, an enzyme modifier, reshapes cancer metabolism to impair cancer growth, blocking glycolysis and inhibiting mTOR. And when you look at it this way, as the addition of a metabolic state, ketosis, and the addition of signaling molecules that result, yes, as a function of carbohydrate restriction, things start to make a lot more sense. So no, carbs are not evil. But cancer, it kind of is. And if we have a metabolic state that helps to block cancer, well, you better believe that's excellent news because I certainly want to remain alive. <laughs> well, thanks, Nick, for another great video. But I have to be a little bit of a, a, I don't know, a wet blanket. It's not ready for prime time meaning uh, this is still theoretical and, and yet it's great. It's exciting. It, it's, uh, it's like you have just um, discovered the mechanism that's needed to make a smartphone, but you don't have a smartphone yet. So the, the research is still very early in terms of progression through clinical trials and knowing whether and how to use it in the real oncology world, the cancer world. So the Warburg effect uh, 100 years ago or so is the idea that cancer cells predominantly use glucose. It was sort of rediscovered by these radiation oncologists who were looking at tumors lighting up because they were radio labeling glucose. FTG glucose, which is a way to look for metastases, lights up the, the cancer all over the body, glucose uptake. And then if you cut out the carbs from the diet, it, it changes things. The, even the heart isn't seen anymore because the, the glucose isn't taken up by the heart on a keto diet. So the, it, actually the heart runs on fat, fatty acids and, and lactate. But that's another sidebar. But, so the idea that the cancer runs on glucose is a bit limited. So while it is a factor, and I see that there now is a field of defining how sensitive a tumor is to glucose. And it actually doesn't matter if it's, you know, uh, say, for example, a thyroid cancer, where, what organ it is, thyroid or, or liver or, or breast. What you want to know is the molecular type. And it's, again, kind of not ready for prime time in that some tumors rely on sugar a lot, but if you cut out the sugar, it can still use amino acids to grow and to, you know, shape shift or morph to other kinds of energy. So cancer is a really tough thing to, to address and to, to prevent and to treat. But other exciting things, not just the keto diet, but what if you added ketones in the form of a pill or a drink or a gummy? And that research again is in its infancy. The taste, the palatability of a ketone drink has improved greatly over the last 10 years. First ones that came around were tasted like jet fuel and, and you know, really hard to drink. Now there are ones that are very tasty and you can raise a ketone level by drinking ketones. So I look forward to more research on keto diets and keto supplementation with or without a keto diet, using keto as an adjunct 
or adjuvant, an addition to cancer treatment to me now makes sense. And I will train or teach someone how to do a keto diet for any kind of cancer really. But I'll be very clear is that I can't guarantee that it will help that we don't have high level, meaning clinical trial evidence that a keto diet will be helpful to reverse or prevent cancer. It just doesn't exist. Yes, there are a few anecdotes and in, in some cohorts, and it seems like the glioblastoma multiforme, this brain cancer seems to be particularly responsive. People have come to our meetings talking about how they're doing, and uh, it's exciting to see, but it's not yet ready for a policy based on the science yet. But the, the, the theory is, is solid. And thank you again, Nick, for another great video. Uh, Nick, if you haven't watched him or subscribed to his channel, please do. He has a great story of his own reversal of a serious metabolic and medical issue using a keto diet. And I watch his videos all the time to be up on the latest science as well. But uh, in my positioning, I'm in a clinic where a patient comes to me, I need higher level evidence before I can say that a keto diet will prevent or treat cancer. I hope that's helpful. If you like, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and leave me your, leave me your comments below. I put out new content Wednesdays and Fridays now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.